Hello statistics students, this is Jamie, Amy, and this video is our discussion on section 9.2, two population means and independent samples. On this first slide, I put the notation for you. It's um, nothing new, you guys are used to mu, sub one means first population. You're used to sigma, sub one, first population. Lowercase n is sample size, x bar is sample mean, and lowercase s is the sample standard deviation. And if there's a corresponding sub two, then we will be, uh, those variables will be corresponding to population number two. Requirements, we need simple random samples, uh, each of size over 30, and having um, coming from a population with normal distribution. Okay. Two population means independent samples. Uh, the first program will be used if sigma sub 1 and sigma sub 2 are known or unknown. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. So basically, it doesn't matter if sigma sub 1 and sigma sub 2 are known or unknown, but it's this part. It's the and. <laughs> uh, they are not assumed to be equal. If that is the case, then our degrees of freedom will be the smaller of whichever sample size minus 1 is smaller that's the degree of freedom we use. Okay, if that is our scenario, we're gonna hit stat test to find these two programs. One is called the two sample t test, and one is called the two sample t interval. You would use the first one, two sample t test, if you're asked to test a claim, and you'll use the two sample t interval if you're asked to construct a confidence interval. Okay, then you will enter the stats, and uh, it's going to ask you if you want to pool the sample, and you're going to say no for these ones. And that is mainly because um, sigma 1 and sigma 2 are not assumed to be equal. I like to think of it as a, a swimming pool, like literally a, a swimming pool here <laughs> is a pool. And if sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2, like if we can, are assuming that, then you can go ahead and throw both sigmas into the pool. Just throw them in the pool and just deal with them all in one pool. Uh, but here we have sigma 1 and sigma 2 not assumed to be equal, so you're not going to pool the data. Okay, second option. Sigma 1 and sigma 2 are unknown, okay, uh, but this time they are assumed to be equal. So we're gonna pool the sample variance. And you can see my very fancy display there on, we're throwing both sigma one and sigma two into the same pool. And we're allowed to do that because we're assuming that sigma one and sigma two are equal. The degrees of freedom in that case would be your first population sample size plus sign, your second population sample size minus two, okay? And if that is our um, situation we're dealing with, we'll choose that two sample t-test if we're asked to test a hypothesis. And when it says um, pool the sample, you will say yes. Or we've got the two sample t-interval, which you will use if you're asked to construct a confidence interval. And when you're asked to pool the sample, you'll say yes. All right, <clears throat> let's try an example. Subjects with red backgrounds were asked to think of creative uses for a brick. Other subjects with blue backgrounds were given the same task. Researchers claim that blue enhances creativity. Test the claim using a 0.01 significance level. Okay, so we're testing the claim that blue enhances creativity. Okay, um, so the group with red backgrounds, there were 35 of them. The group with blue backgrounds, there were 36 of them. Uh, they were given this brick against some background and they were given some creativity score. Uh, I'm not sure how these scores were, what the rubric was or anything, but nonetheless, the average creativity score for, I'm gonna put a sub one there, X bar sub one was 3.39. And let's put a sub two. The average creativity score for population two was 3.97. Okay, so the creativity score for the red background is lower than the creativity score for the blue background. Um, I wonder if it is enough though to claim that blue enhances creativity. 
we have a sample standard deviation of 0.97 for POP1 and 0.63 for POP2. Our requirements are met because our samples are both over 30. Simple random sample, two independent groups. Okay, we set up our null and alternative hypothesis. Uh, this is the first time you've seen mu listed twice, and that's because we're in chapter 9 now and we're comparing two populations' means. So we're comparing the mean of POP1, so mu sub 1, against the mean of POP2, so mu sub 2. We always use the equal sign in the null hypothesis, so that shouldn't look um, new to you. This one, though, we have to come up with on our own, and as you guys know, little recall, the options are less than, greater than, or does not equal to. Uh, no other options for that um, inequality right there. And the reason we went with less than, this one's a little tricky in the wording, because check this out. It's, it's saying that researchers claim that blue enhances creativity. So they're saying that the, I'm going to put a B for blue just to oversimplify. They're saying that that should have a greater average creativity score than the red. So B is greater than R. Blue enhances creativity more than red. So when you look at it this way, B is greater than R, but there's a problem there. Um, we have set R as population one. So um, this is our sub one, if you will. And this is our sub two, if you will. But now if we swap them both to mu's, it becomes mu sub two is greater than mu sub one, which is what we have written there. It's just read from uh, right to left instead of left to right. So tricky one there. Okay, our two population standard deviations are unknown, and there's nowhere in this problem that says, hey, assume sigma 1 and sigma 2 are equal. And that's really the key right there. Um, they're assumed, they're not assumed equal, so we're not going to pool the sample. So let's do this together. Take out your calculator, turn it on, clear your screen. Okay, everybody hit stat, arrow over to test and scroll down to, this will be our first time using anything, uh, to sample t-test. Um, I was going to say it's our first time using anything with a 2 in front, but that's not true. In section 9.1, we used 2-prop z-test uh, to test claims from two proportions, I'm sorry, two populations about proportions. Okay, so now we're using 2-sample t-test. Open that program. And we are going to run this off of the stats. We don't have the raw data. We don't have their creativity scores. So make sure stats is highlighted. X sub one is 3.39. Lowercase s sub one is 0 0.97. N sub one was 35. Now population two. X bar sub two, 3.97. Uh, s sub two, 0 0.63. And the sample size for POP2, 36. Okay, next thing it wants from us is the inequality that we used, and we chose the less than. So make sure that one's highlighted. And here's what I was talking about, about the swimming pool or the pool. Um, it's asking, do we want to pool the sample? And the answer is no. The only time the answer would be yes is if they said, assume the population standard deviation sigma 1 is equal to the population standard deviation sigma 2. And ours doesn't say that, so we say no. Arrow down, okay? At least on my calculator, you have to arrow down until you see calculate. And go ahead and hit calculate to run this. Okay, on your output screen, you have t equals, that is called your test statistic. You have p equals, that is called your p value. So, our test statistic is negative 2.9789 and so on. Our p-value is 0 0.002107723636 and so on. I am using the p-value method here in that I'm comparing p to my significance level, level alpha, which was given to me as 0 0.01. And it turns out that p is low. 0.002 is less than 
0.01. And you guys know the rhyme by now. P is hot, uh, sorry. <laughs> if P is low, the null must go. So we reject the null hypothesis. And then we say there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that, and then we restate the claim. Blue enhances creativity. Pause that video, watch it again if you need to. Um, go through it slowly. There are a lot of thought processes that go between each step that you want to focus on. Um, and let's, I'm going to move on to the next example. Using the same data though, from, from the color creativity example, this time we're being requested to construct a 98% confidence interval estimate for the difference between the mean creativity score for those with red backgrounds and the mean creativity score for those with a blue background. All right, so the task, we are tasked with something different this time. We are tasked with constructing a confidence interval. So we are going to run two sample t interval, int for interval. All right, let's do this together. Hit stat, over to test, arrow down to two sample t interval. Mine is option zero. Open that up. Enter the stats. Uh, my stats are still there from last time because I haven't um, cleared my calculator out. If your stats are gone, you need to re-enter them from the last screen. 3.39, 0.97, 35, 3.97, 0.63, and 36. Oh, one major change here though. I'm glad I didn't just run that. The confidence level, they switched it up. They want us to be 98% confident this time. Last time was 95, so we need to change that to 0.98. Pooled, the answer is still no. The only time it would be yes if it says assume sigma 1 and sigma 2 are equal. Arrow down to calculate, run that program, and that first output line is our confidence interval. Negative 1.046 is the lower confidence limit, and negative 0 0.1142, oh, mine gave a 2 at the end, is the upper confidence limit. Okay, that being said, we want to focus on where the number 0 is at. Because remember, 0 represents no difference. So we're being asked to construct a confidence interval estimate for the difference. That's really key right there. You guys are going to want to pick up on that. Whenever you're seeing... Um, set up a confidence interval for the difference, you need to think about zero. Where is it? Is it in the confidence interval or not? Okay, well, our limits are both negative, which means if I were to graph these two numbers on a number line, zero would not be between them. So this confidence interval does not contain zero. Okay, let's write that down nicer. The limits have the same sign. Interval does not contain zero which suggests that there is significant difference between the two populations' means. If, uh, if the interval did contain zero, then um, there could be no difference, because zero represents no difference. All right, so there is sufficient evidence to support a difference in the population mean that the claim uh, means that the claim that blue enhances creativity. Okay, and that'll finish our discussion on section 9.2. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time for section 9.3.